let's pray. Lord, this is a special, amazing time that you've given us here. It's baptism, but it's also the consecration of the land and the creation of the covenant. So, Lord, I pray your presence here. Lord, here we are out in the open. We're not in the church building. We're out, you know, we're, it's before you and all the people. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be made manifest here in a significant way. Yeah. Make yourself real among us, Lord. Be in our worship time and everything that takes place here today. Lead us and guide us. Let a release of the power of your Holy Spirit take yeah. place. In Jesus' name. Set your rule and reign. your kingdom here in Richland Center. Yes, oh God. God, that you would do something that is so beyond anything that man could ever do or dream of, God. God, we just pray that the words that we just sang, God, we just release them as declarations, God, into the heavens and into the earth today, God. God, that we would see the kingdom of heaven come here on earth, God. God, that the sick and the poor, God, would be, be met by you in Jesus' name, God. God, that's our prayer, God. See what you
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Oh, just tell them how wonderful. you that came or wandered over. Uh, we're here for a very, couple very special things for today. So I want to try and explain that to you. The first hour we're going to be doing a consecration. The second hour a baptism. Now there are two people that specifically that we knew were going to be baptized. Well, actually one late last night and the other one, a few of the other ones, uh, Adam was the first one, all right? So anyway, I'll talk about that later on. First we're going to do a consecration of the land. So here's a couple things that I wanted to read from you. I was kind of before the Lord this morning, and he gave me several things to speak over the land to us, uh, things that he wants in his heart. So I'm going to read some of those to you. It'll take a few minutes to get through this. 1 Timothy 4, 4 and 5, it says, For everything God created is good. Amen. 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 And nothing, thank you, Bob. <laughs> and, uh, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving yeah. because it is consecrated by the word of God and by prayer yeah okay consecrated by the word of God and by prayer right yeah. so right. today the first hour is going to be about the word of God and prayer Joshua 3 5 it says Joshua told the people consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the, word, the Lord is going to do amazing things among you. So most of you know tomorrow is what's commonly known as Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Woohoo! Yeah. Right. If this, I just, the Lord gave me this person. I'm, Lord, let it be that tomorrow, he says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things yeah. among you. Yeah. Amen. All right? Yes, let's receive that. So Lord... Do amazing things among us, even today, but also tomorrow as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Do amazing things. So there's two things we're going to use for consecration. Uh, well, the word of the Lord in prayer. And then there's a couple elements we're going to throw in there because they're biblical. I just want to make it clear that these two things don't have any power in and of themselves. They're symbolic, but... I felt like the Lord wanted us to use them anyway. Okay, yeah. so they're symbols, but it's important that we use them. Bapti baptism, which we'll do a little later on, is also kind of a symbol, but it's a symbol of something that's already inside of us, an internal expression of a faith in Jesus that is that is life transforming. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the two things that we're going to use is salt, salt and oil salt represents the lord's portion okay so in the old testament the things that were salted were representative of god's portion that belonged to the lord it went to the priest but it belonged to the lord it's a testimony of god working it's cleansing of all that has taken place before so I want you to think, I don't know what all is taking place on this land, in this river. But I, we, we're asking the Lord to cleanse everything of the past and start today from a new place. Amen. It preserves Amen. the land and the covenant forever, according to the scripture. It's a reminder of an agreement between God and man. And in a practical sense, it adds flavor to everything. Yeah. 
Imagine trying to have food without salt, right? The Lord gave us that as kind of a symbol that we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Yeah. The oil, we're going to use oil uh, also today. We're gonna to anoint people. Oil is used, was used in the Old Testament and some of the new. Oil was used to set people apart for the Lord. They were anointed with oil as a setting apart for the Lord. Oil represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. So when it comes upon a person, it's symbolic of the Holy Spirit coming on someone. Oil is a declaration of God's will over a place or a people. And of course we know that many times oil was used for anointing people that they would be prayed for to be healed and they were healed by the prayer of faith. Right? Right. So here's a couple more verses. 2 Chronicles 13.5 Don't you know that the Lord, the God of Israel, has given the kingship of Israel to David and his descendants forever by a covenant of salt? Did you know that was called the covenant of salt? The Davidic covenant. The covenant of salt. Because salt is that portion of the Lord and that preserving for David. His throne will reign forever. Of course, Jesus inherited the throne of David and he reigns forever. We're also, we're going to be consecrating the land. We're also going to be consecrating the river today. So 2 Kings 2, 7 through 22. So there's quite a few verses here to so lock in with me on this. This is the prophet Elijah and his attendant. Uh, I call him the junior prophet at the time. Anybody remember his name? Elisha. Okay. So one of the things, well, I'll, I'll get to it as I read. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance. This was near Jericho, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Today it's the pine. <laughs> Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. Now, when I was reading this this morning, I, in a sense, the Lord wanted us to pray for. Okay, so we have a strong prophetic deposit here in our area. This is a prophetic area. And there are a number of people that are raised up to prophesy and others that are to be in the position, ministry position of prophets. And right now, I just want to take a moment and pray for the double portion. Now, we're praying for the double portion of Elisha. Elisha got the double portion from Elijah. That would make it a quadruple portion of what Elijah did. Right? Right. You with me on the math on that? Okay. Double, I'm pray double. for that right now. So anybody who wants to receive that? Lord, we pray this moment, just like Elijah asked Elijah for the double portion, we want to pray for all that heaven has for us. Lord, we pray that you'd open the heavens, rend the heavens, break yes. them open, Lord, and come upon us with the spirit of Elijah and Elisha and more than that, Lord, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, yeah. the Holy Spirit, yeah. that has all the power in heaven and on earth. Yeah. Lord, we break, pray you break forth with the anointing of the Holy Spirit for the prophetic release, the prophetic empowerment, all that was evident in Elijah, Elisha, and the ministry of Jesus on earth. We pray for the double portion, Lord. In this case, it would be the quadruple portion, Lord. So we pray four times what Elijah had. God, release that, please. Okay, I want to keep going on verse 10. It says, You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared 
and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. And then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. So Elisha got to see Elijah go up into heaven. Lord, let us see what you're doing in heaven. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over it. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Look, they said, we your servants have 50 able men. Let them go and look for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has picked him up and set him down on some mountain or some valley. Okay, I just want to stop here for a second. The company of the prophets and their understanding the logical thing that happened was that Elijah, Elijah was picked up by the Lord and taken out somewhere else. Okay, do we expect God for things like that anymore? I hope so. He still does that kind of stuff, right? right. We've inherited everything that's ever been spoken by the Lord. No, Elijah replied, do not send them. Because Elijah knew where Elijah went. But they persisted until he was too embarrassed to refuse, so he said, send them. And they sent 50 men who searched for three days, but did not find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? The people of the city said to Elisha, look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, this is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained pure to this day, according to the word of Elisha that he had spoken. We're going to we're going to consecrate the water, but first we're going to consecrate the land. So I'm just, I'm giving you all of this because we're going to go out in a few minutes and just pray over the land and the water here, consecrated for the Lord. Right? Lord, let it be. Psalm 46, 4 and 5, it says this. There is a river, there is a river, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. That river's actually in heaven, it tells us in Revelation 22. But the Lord can use these rivers on earth too. Right. So Lord, we want this river, this Pine River, to be yours, to be a place where the city of God dwells, where your people find life and hope. It's not just because of the there's a river, but Lord, because your presence is there. Exodus 49 through 13. Take the anointing oil. Now we're changing from salt now over to oil. Okay, you with me? Okay, take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it in its furnishings and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar of burnt offerings and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar and it will be, uh, it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and the stand and consecrate them. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments, anoint him and consecrate him, so he may be he may serve me as priest. If you want to be, we're going to first anoint people for the Lord. 
This isn't baptism. It's just kind of a declaration that we want to be faithful and serve the Lord. And we're going to, I, the Lord said, have a consecration with uh, salt and anointing oil, right? That's what he shared with me this morning. 1 Kings 8:64. On that same day, the king consecrated the middle part of the courtyard. So this was land that was anointed in front of the temple of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of fellowship offerings because the bronze altar that stood before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, and the fat of the fellowship offerings. So of course, we're offering to the king of heaven. The altar is in heaven. Numbers 18, 19 says, whatever I set aside, from the holy offerings the Israelites presented the Lord, I give to you and your sons and daughters as a perpetual share. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord. For both you and your offspring. So what we're doing today is not just declaring, Lord, we want to make us ourselves available to you, but the generations, the younger generations that are with us and the ones that have not yet been born. We're asking the Lord that this would be an offering for the Lord and to use them. So, uh, what I, I think we should do um, is each be anointed. If you want to be, you don't have to be, but if you want to be. And then I'd like, uh, I got two bowls of salt there. New bowls, fresh salt. I just bought them this morning, right? That's what Elisha called for. Now remember, the salt doesn't do the consecrating, it's a symbol that of what we're doing before the Lord. So we're, we're going around and we're gonna consecrate the land. By the way, I'll, I'll mention this again at the baptism, but Richland Center Fellowship, the first service, church service that we ever had, right over there where this plant playground is and an old community center building that was here. That was in July 22nd, 1984. So we've come back now, after all these years, and we're reclaiming this land mm -hmm. for the Lord. Amen. So I want to uh, want to invite you, if you'd like to be anointed. Mick, where are you? You want to come up and anoint people, and I'll anoint people. I'm going to pray over you first, but you're going to anoint you, and we're going to take Mick will take a bowl of salt. Somebody's got to go over to that side because we got to get at least as far as that bench and platform are over there. And then this side, we're going to go around this property. And every once in a while, okay, just bear with me. I've never done anything like this before. But we're going we're gonna to scatter a little bit of salt on the ground. And we're going to take the anointing, the oil, anointing oil, it's olive oil. We're going to take the anointing oil. Now, every once in a while, I want you to pour a little bit of it out across the land. I, I really believe the Lord wants us to do this. And especially in the corners, where there's a corner, where you're turning right or left, make sure that you get the corner with oil, right? And with salt. You know, it sounds weird. But they did it. It's about obedience. It is. It's not about it's a, weird. Yeah, I, it's not weird. Yeah. It's, it's from the Lord, right? Okay, this is really a special time. I tell you, when God was sharing this with me this morning, it's like he was saying, this is... This is tremendous. This is an amazing time. So let's let's take it that way. So I'm just gonna um, pray. Yeah, why don't you give me that one? Mr. Cosgrove, we'll give him that one. Anybody who wants to be anointed, we're gonna anoint you. And then I'd ask. Um, let's see. We need. I was gonna take one of the bowls, but if I'm anointing, we probably need to send somebody out of the bowl. And if you want to go in these groups, go around and just pray as you walk. So we should go in like four different groups. One headed this way two across the bridge over there and one over this way and if you don't want to go you can just hang around here until we come back right but don't be afraid this is not a big deal for us to go and do this i mean it's not a big deal in terms of it is a big deal it's not a big deal in terms, don't be embarrassed or whatever we are standing before the lord in the boldness of the holy spirit so let's not be scared of that that's right anointing and consecrating as we give it to people and as we walk around this land i pray the land would be consecrated and let me just tell you the definition of consecration declare declare for a divine purpose the land and the river is going to be declared for a divine purpose today okay so lord i pray you'd anoint the oil 
and the salt. And Lord, I know that that's not actually what does the consecrating. It's our offering, our prayers, and our worship before you. So Lord, as we do this, Lord, let it be a symbolic act that we claim this land for the kingdom of God and we ask your presence to be here. Every person that ever comes here would be impacted by the presence of the Lord. Lord, I pray you'd station your angels on this land, that they'd be around ministering to people uh, during this time, Lord, and, and, and the ages to come. Angels don't get tired or sleepy. They can just hang out here indefinitely. So Lord, we pray for that. Woo! We pray for the power of God to be on this time and we anoint people. So this is going to be a short process. You just come up and I'll put it little oil on your forehead or mick wheel and you um i need two people that are adult enough to uh patient emily you each want to take a bowl of salt one of you has to go across the river we just take this every now and then please don't spill it out uh we're just taking every now and then to scatter a little bit and if you don't have any left for the river i've got some more in the car okay so if you want to be uh, anointed want to be anointed, we'll put oil on you and the Lord will anoint you. So if you'd like to be anointed with oil and with a salt covenant, I invite you to come on up and just pass through. We're going to put the anointing oil on you. Be anointed in Jesus' name. It's all going to go fast. I'm just going to put anointing on anybody who wants to be anointed. Anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ.
we're going to finish the time of consecration by consecrating the river, the Pine River. When I was growing up around here, the Pine River was considered a muddy mess that nobody wanted anything to do with. There was no fishing, there was no swimming, the sewage ran into it. Now it's cleaned up, but we want to see it as a river of life. So we're praying today that there, this will be the first of many baptisms, only there'd be hundreds of people lined up to be yes, baptized in the future. Jesus. Young and old, that they'd be yes, coming God. here, they'd be seeking the Lord, and these waters would be filled with, with life, the life of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to consecrate the river right now, and I'm asking that we, uh, I'm going to put some water in. Emily, you can put some salt in. I don't know whether where our other soldiers and water is went to, but uh, a little bit of oil. This is this is classic olive oil, so it won't hurt anything if you're environmentally <laughs> concerned. Okay, we're going to boil a little oil in the water. We're going to put a little salt in there. This amount of salt will be far less than half of a uh, snow when we salt the roads, right? So it won't be any be no significant environmental impact but we're asking that the lord would cleanse this river and make it whole so yes jesus right now um well i guess we so they may receive it. We commit to you that we will follow you with all of our heart and we'll, we will keep the land holy. Yes. May this land and the covenant pass to the generations to come. In Jesus' name. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. So this is a real thing, folks, this covenant. I believe the Lord is going, this is a kind of a start of breaking open his the moving of the Holy Spirit in this area. He's now bringing this outside the walls of the church. And he's starting to move in the in the city, the county, the region that we got. So this is a very important time. Yes. Amen. So Lord, let it be so. Yes. Yeah. We're going to transition to the baptisms.